Hey everybody. So we are on the second day of our Ancient Civilizations project and the main point of today is to check yourself before you wreck yourself because bad grades are bad for your health. And just to be clear, we are going to be learning about all eight of these civilizations, not one of them or some of them, all eight. Mesopotamia, Ancient Egypt, Indus Valley, Ancient China, not modern China, Ancient Hebrews, the Hittites, Ancient Persia, and Ancient Ethiopia. So how am I supposed to do this, you might be asking. Well, you have a couple choices. You can choose a research paper, presentation software like Google Slides, or a YouTube video. And the second choice you have, you can either work alone or with one or two other people. And they do, they do not have to be in your hour because we are in this online world. Regardless of what you choose, have a strategy first. How do you operate best? Form a strategy before you attack this project. All of us are going to use an appropriate scale. Not too much detail, not too little detail, like baby bear's porridge, just right. And dear God, don't be the cut and paste person. If you are in this habit, it is time to break this habit. Cutting and pasting will not improve your skills. Okay, so let's break ourselves from that. So what are you studying? Well, you are studying two things, the geography and the culture. And culture is in four parts that I'll break down in a minute. So in terms of geography, it's most likely you're going to be focusing on three of the five themes of geography, region, location, and place. So for example, using Mesopotamia, you could say Mesopotamia was in the Middle East where modern day Iraq is, and it was a hot desert-like place with these two rivers that the Tigris and Euphrates that cut through and made it very prosperous. That's a legitimate answer to the question. Now in terms of culture, the first part of culture um, are called customs. And it's just ways that people do things. It's patterns of behavior that people have. For example, every New Year's, we stay up till midnight and we count down in New York City. They drop the ball, have musical artists. We light fireworks on the 4th of July. When we're kids, we dress up in costumes and ask for candy on October 31st. It's just a way of doing things. So an example in Mesopotamia, the Akitu Festival, where they worship their gods and welcome them in the new year and try to have a fresh start. So that's a custom. Art reflects culture, culture reflects art. So for example, here's a piece of Mesopotamian art in stone, and you can see it's a religious piece of art. So when you look at the Mesopotamian art, a lot of it was religious, so the art reflects that they are religious. If you look at this American art, I think this says all you need to know about America. Okay? America. Okay, you follow me. So it reflects the culture. Culture reflects art. Art reflects culture. Now, social institutions are the things that people struggle with the most. And let me try to simplify this for you. When life is good, these are strong. When life is bad, these are weak. And these social institutions apply to all groups of people. You have to run yourself. How was their government? Um, how were the family structures? Was the man in charge? Was the woman in charge? Were, were they equally in charge? That kind of thing. How are children being educated in these people? If Was everybody being educated? How do people worship? Worship Houses of worship are a social institution. And how are people making their money? Banks are social institutions. So again, how are these people running themselves? How are their families structured? How are children being educated? How did they worship and how did they make their money? That's essentially what social institutions are. And what I consider the most important and the most interesting is the achievement and innovation piece of a people. And the reason why I say that is that I look around my room here and a lot of the stuff that I use was created by these ancient people that I'm using today. They've contributed to the body of human learning. And this is called collective learning. So Mesopotamia gave us mathematics and mass-produced bricks and the first writing system and a plow to create more food. And compared to America, America gave the world the polio vaccine and we invented the atomic bomb and the light bulb and traffic lights. So every group of people who has ever been has contributed to the body of learning. It's called collective learning. So when is it due? It is due September 28th. It's a substantial grade. So if you're not doing so hot, this is your chance to turn it around. If you're not doing so hot and you don't do this, you just dug yourself into a deeper hole. And I don't want that for anybody. Okay, so when you are done, uh, whether it's a uh, presentation software or a YouTube link or a research paper, just send it to me on Google Classroom, please. And, you know, mess again, Mesopotamia, you can see Tigris Euphrates, Fertile Crescent, a ziggurat, 
you can see ancient Egypt, the Sphinx and the pyramids and the Nile, the Indus Valley with the Indus River. We're talking Pakistan and India, ancient China. Now, in parentheses, these are the old dynasties that I'm referring to. Okay, we're not looking for modern China along the Yellow River here in China. The ancient Hebrews or the ancient Israelites, things like the Ten Commandments and their uh, creation of glass. The Hittites, masters of metal, modern-day Turkey. Ancient Persia, big, bad Persia. Persia was huge. Um, and what were they up to? And then the Aksum, or the ancient Ethiopians in Northeast Africa, master traders. So final word about the project, research skills. Be smart with your research. If you type in China into Google, you're going to get too much. If you type in a paragraph into Google, I would like to know the geography and the culture of the Mesopotamians, the Egyptians, and the Hittites. Okay, it's going to confuse Google. Here's smart research skills. Ancient Egyptian inventions. Boom. Probably two or three words is going to get you to a good place. If you're working with a teammate or teammates, make sure that you're all pulling your weight. Stay on those people who are not. And the big points. Ancient civilizations are the foundation of the house the modern world rests upon. That's why we learn about them. They all possess the seven criteria to be considered a civilization, and they created a bigger body of learning, collective learning. We're the only species that can live, die, and pass on our knowledge to people afterwards. Okay, I have an old dog, and when my old dog's about to check out, my old dog's not going to go to the new puppy and say, new puppy, don't urinate on the rug. Or the big guy gets upset. Dogs can't do that. I have to train the puppy fresh. Now, my kids can say years from now, you know, your grandfather once taught me. So that's collective learning, and that's what we're doing. So hopefully this clarifies things. Um, please stay in contact with me if you need any help. And I look forward to seeing the results of your labor. So have a good day.